So, as the next exercise, let us now find out the center of mass of a solid hemisphere. So, this hemisphere that I have drawn here is now a solid one. It contains mass which is distributed throughout its volume now. It is no more a mass on the surface, it is a mass in the volume. So, if we assume that the mass of this hemisphere, solid hemisphere is m and its radius is r, we can first of all try and find out what we call as the volume mass density. Rho, the volume mass density means the total mass by the total volume of this hemisphere, which by definition will be nothing but m by what is the volume of a hemisphere? The volume of a full sphere is 4 by 3 pi r cube. So, we understand it will be just half of that 2 by 3 pi r cubed will be the density which we can also write as 2 m by 3 pi r cubed, right. Now, the next thing is to be to be able to divide this hemisphere into elements so that we are able to integrate over them and cover the whole hemisphere and solve the integrals for um, the x and the y coordinates of center of mass as well. So, if we look at this uh, figure carefully and try and see what could be the possible shape of uh, elements that we can divide this into there are possible options with us. Okay? One option is we can divide it, we can cut this hemisphere horizontally so that we get discs or plates like this. One such disc will look like this with a certain height from the base and a certain thickness also like this. We can cut this hemisphere horizontally into many such discs, find out the mass of each of those elemental discs consider their center of mass is lying right here at the center right and then use the integral x dm to find out the x coordinate and y dm integral y dm to find out the y coordinate of center of mass. This is one way. There is another set of um, elements or another shape of element that we can choose which could be that we divide this hemisphere into many hollow hemispheres. So, for example, taking this base the same base as that of the hemisphere and we consider a hollow hemisphere of let us say a certain radius r and having a certain thickness also dr let us say. And we can use the result derived in the previous exercise of the center of mass of a hollow hemisphere and use that here to find out the center of mass of this elemental hollow hemisphere that we have taken and then integrated over the whole hemisphere like putting the limits correct limits to then get it for a hollow hemisphere. So, we have got these two options over here. This particular derivation that we are going to do now is will be by taking discs as our elements the small mass elements. Maybe you can try doing the same exercise using hemispheres hollow hemispheres as the mass elements as well. Okay? So, let us see how we can proceed with this. This is a simple derivation only. So, what we have got here is a disc an elemental disc which let us say lies at a height of some y. Do you understand that y will be the y coordinate of the center of this disc and it, it will also be the y coordinate of all the points that lie on the surface of the disc everywhere. right? All of them are at a height y above the base of the hemisphere. Uh, the way the disc is drawn, we have taken some thickness also associated with this thickness. Let us assume that the thickness of the disc is dy, small thickness only, elementally small, very small thickness, so that we can assume that it is almost like a sheet. Now, do you understand that this distance here will also be r? So, that if we want to find out or if I, if we want to uh, check for the value of um, if we try to check for the value of the radius of this disc can we say the radius will be this line let us call the radius to have a value x okay do we see here from this figure that the x value the y value and the value r the radius they are connected to each other with a formula x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. This will be true everywhere wherever you take the disc. Let us say we take the new another disc over here somewhere. 
at a little height further height over here do we understand that here the radius of the disc will be this x dash let us say and its y coordinate will be this whole length call it y dash and this length will still be r. So, can we say the x dash y dash and r are still related to each other with the same formula x dash square plus y dash square is equal to r dash r square right. So, this will be valid for each disc that we consider here on this hemisphere and hence we can use this as a as a standard expression for this disc right. Now, the next thing how do we find out the mass of this elemental disc that we have got this time we obtain the mass d m by first finding out the volume of this disc because the mass is distributed over a volume we need to first get the volume d v small volume of the disc d v and then multiply it with the density of this disc mass uh, mass density volume mass density to get the mass of this elemental disc. I hope you all understand this expression. This is coming from the basic expression that rho is mass per unit volume. So, we can also write it as d m by d v mass per unit volume. So, it is from here that we can write d m as rho d v right. So, the next exercise would be to be able to find out the volumes d v of the elemental disc. How do we find out the volume of this elemental disc? See that this disc if we just draw the figure of this disc separately this disc looks like a, a thin cylinder a very a cylinder for of a very small height you can also call it a disc right. This cylinder has a radius x and it has a height of dy for such a cylinder what will be the its volume can we say the volume of a cylinder is base area which in this case will be pi x squared times the height which is dy. So, area of the base times the height gives us the volume of the cylinder. In this case, this will be the volume of our elemental disc. So, can we say pi x square dy gives us the small volume. We can now substitute this value over here to get the dm the mass of this elemental disc as rho which is 2 m by 3 pi r cubed into dv which is now pi x squared dy see that pi will cancel out here. So, we will have a simplified expression right. Now, the next thing is to find out the x and the y coordinates of center of masses. So, I hope you all understand here from the same symmetry that we have discussed in the previous exercises the x coordinate of center of mass is expected to be 0 because the mass is distributed uniformly about the y axis right. In fact, if we take this disc and if we try to find out its center of mass this particular point which is the center of mass of the disc it has its own x coordinate 0. So, when we substitute x is equal to 0 over here we will get the x coordinate of center of mass to be 0 itself right. Whereas, the y coordinate of center of mass y c m which by definition will be 1 by m integral of y d m we can substitute its value now 1 by capital M into integral of what is y? the y coordinate of the center of the disc it is y itself we have taken the center of the disc or the whole disc at a distance y above the base. So, y into d m now let us substitute the value 2 by capital M 3 r cubed into x squared d y it is this integral that we have to solve see that the integrating factor here is y we have to integrate it with respect to the with, with respect to y. So, that the limits of integration will be of y. Now, how do we check for the limits of integration look at the figure and see that the first disc that we will have at the bottom most position position at the base of the hemisphere over here will have the y value 0. So, the lower limit of the integral will be 0 whereas, the last disc that we will have here right at the top of the hemisphere will have its y value equal to r the radius of the disc uh, radius of the hemisphere. So, r becomes then the upper limit of the integral right. Now, we can solve it just one more thing see that in this within this integral we have two variables one is y and the other is x both x and y change as we move to different discs from the bottom to the top right. We cannot integrate a function which has got two variables inside it we need to reduce the second variable 
in the form of the first variable and you know we need to reduce this expression down in just one single variable. How do we do that? We can do that by expressing the value of x in terms of y which we can do by using this particular expression the relation between x and y. From here see that we can write x squared is equal to r squared minus y squared isn't it? So, it is this value of x squared that we can substitute down here in the integral so that we get 1 by m constants are taken out. So, 2 m by 3 r cubed come out m cancels out integral of y into what is x squared x squared is r squared minus y squared into dy integral from 0 to capital R and now we have to integrate this function. How do we integrate? Okay. So, okay, okay. I have made a small mistake over here. This is 3 by 2 not 2 by 3, right. So, here it will be 3 by 2 over here. So, 3 m by 2 r cubed throughout. So, now when we integrate 0 to r, see that we can open up this bracket to get r squared y dy minus y cubed dy. So, this is the whole two terms within the integral that we have to solve. How do we solve this? Integral, okay, we have to solve the integral now. So, let us remove the integral sign. See that the integral of y dy, r squared is a constant, right? Integral of y dy will be y squared by 2. So, we will have r squared into y squared by 2 and limits from 0 to r minus integral of y cubed dy will be y raised to the power 4 by 4 limits from 0 to r. Solve this 3 m by 2 r cubed into when we put the limits over here we will get a r squared by 2 minus 0. So, we will have r squared by 2 which when multiplied with this r squared will become r raised to the power 4 by 2 minus put y is equal to r, r raised to the power 4 by 4 minus 0 that will go away. So, this is what we are le left with r raised to the power 4 by 2 minus r raised to the power 4 by 4 which will be r raised to the power 4 by 4 itself. So, 3 m by 2 r cubed into r raised to the power 4 by 4 solve to get there will be just 1 r left up there. So, we get 3 okay, m has already gone m we have already cancelled out. So, m is not there 3 r by 8 is the final answer for our y c m. So, the y coordinate of center of mass let me write it here is 3 r by 8. This is the final result that we have been looking for 3 r by 8 understand that 3 3 by 8 is a value less than 1, yes. So, r will lie somewhere over here, 3 r by 8, this will be the position of center of mass.